welcome to today's reading. So lovely to have you here, sweet peas. If this is the first time that you're seeing me, I'm the Hermit Tarot, and this is my tarot reading channel over here on YouTube. I do other stuff over here as well, but today's video is going to be a pick a group tarot reading. Now, yeah, we're just going to talk about it. Before I introduce the groups, a couple of quick little things, just a quick little, you know, life updates. Um, I am still recovering from COVID at the time that I'm filming this. I feel great. I feel not infectious anymore, thank God. I can go and slowly assimilate myself with society, still wearing a mask. Um, but at the same time, my voice isn't 100% where it could be. So I'm going to be very careful about that. And I'm filming your intro after I've filmed your group. So I already know what your groups are going to be like. Um, but I just want you to know, like, yeah, I'm trying to preserve what energy and voice quality I have. So I do calmly collect myself in each of your groups. Um, aside from that disclaimer, I have finally fixed the microphone issues, y'all. I know you all noticed it. Some of you commented, others of you didn't, and I appreciate that because I've been talking about it on Instagram. So if you commented on YouTube, you clearly don't watch my Instagram. But it has been an issue that has been bugging me for the last two weeks, and then I got sick, and it was even more of an issue and it was really bugging me but I had heaps of time to figure it out thank goodness so I solved the audio issues and we're back to this layout in terms of this camera with this microphone so yay <laughs> I'm just gonna cheer for me technology is not my friend let alone my cousin so it's always challenging but I'm glad we're here now those disclaimers out of the way today's group is today's group reading is going to be asking spirit what was your person thinking and feeling last time they saw you? Now, this reading can be triggering sometimes, so I did my best to give each of your groups enough time to talk through the information, as well as get channeled messages and get advice from spirit as well. I didn't want you to leave feeling just triggered or challenged or just sort of inundated <laughs> with information. I wanted you to feel like you had more helpful information. So I made sure I got advice for each of the groups. Now, it was a pleasure to do each of the readings. They are different. There's certain similarities, but they're definitely all different groups. So I would, as always, recommend that you take your time selecting a group today. Don't force it, don't rush it. Pause the video if you need to, or join me in the meditation portion of this reading as well if you need to. We're gonna start with group one. Oh my gosh, how dare I? My phone isn't even on silent. Oh my gosh, so scandalously rude. Okay, so group one over here, you will have the shell that is brown and holy <laughs> that's the best way i can describe it if you choose group one you will have this brown and holy shell okay very pretty i mean it's from the beach obviously i don't know if you get shells anywhere else lorraine i've still got sick brain ignore me so group one the brown and holy shell group two you will have the citrine quartz crystal may we focus please thank you the citrine quartz has been with me way longer than I've been with myself. I mean, like, this has gotten me through some difficult times. I don't know if many people believe in the citrine quartz properties, but I do. It definitely raises my vibration. So citrine quartz for group two. Group three, you have this shell from the beach, which I'm pretty sure I collected on Twitch, or my sister did while we were Twitch streaming. So... It's a very common shell. You'll, sh you'll see shells like this in most places. You can probably buy them from certain boho stores as well. That's group three. And lastly, group four, you have this um, beach stone, which I think is a form of quartz, but I'm not too sure how we classify these things. I just collect them because they're pretty and I like the energy that they give me as well. So group four has the beach stone, which kind of looks like a tooth, you know, <laughs> like a wisdom tooth or something. <laughs> So those are the four groups. You may scroll down to the timestamps when you know which of these four groups you're feeling most called to. If you need more time, like I said, pause the video or you can choose to join me in the meditation portion, which will be playing after this clip. Just a quick one minute meditation to help ground you and tune you into your intuition. And when you know which of these four groups you're feeling most called to, click on the timestamps in the description box and join me in your reading.
So the first thing I want you to do with me is to take in two deep mindful breaths. Breathe in, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four, and in, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four. Now I want you to focus on clearing your mind. It's natural to have thoughts racing at this point. I want you to embrace each thought as it comes and let it slip as quickly as it came in. Focus on clearing and balancing out these thoughts so that they come and go without a desire to be attached to them. And now, with the rest in mind, I want you to think of the first group that comes to your mind. It may be a number, it may be an object that I showed you, it could be a specific colour, it could be a feeling that you felt when I showed you each of the groups today. When you are ready and when you feel confident, select your group and join me in your reading. Hi group one and welcome to your reading. If you chose this gorgeous shell over here, if it will just focus please camera, thank you, then this is going to be your reading. So group one, today we're asking spirit, what was your person thinking and feeling the last time that they saw you? Now I'm going to put your shell, let's put it there, let's put it there, it's in view but it's not in the way. We've got some oracle cards for you straight off the cuff. I'm going to start with oracle cards, then we're going to get some tarot, we're going to get some advice and we'll get some channeled messages. Could be a lengthy reading. I'm technically recovering from a sickness that many people in this world are dealing with so we'll see how we go we'll see how we go we'll just get through the messages first card for you is midhaven and the reverse position oh i remember your group i looked at some of your oracle cards when they came out we have saturn return beautiful we have the six number six over here we also have airplane, <laughs> wow. We have island and we have river. Are you gonna focus? There we go, river. Now the song that describes how they were thinking and feeling when they last saw you is Take Me Where Your Heart Is by Q. Yo, not even gonna hold you. This would, if I, if I was the marrying type, this would be the song that I would dance to at my wedding. It is so beautiful. It is very heartfelt. You can just hear it in this person's voice when they sing. There's so much emotion, so much genuine love. And so as you can see the lyrics here, I'm so into you, but I don't know where I've been. I just want you to, to take me where your heart is and you're made wonderful. I would never do you wrong. Hold it down and give me some time. So this tells me a few things. This card is very telling. First of all, your person has love for you. This is the only card in my deck that says love and it was very it took me a long time because my playlist has like thousands over a thousand songs now it took me a long time to find a song that i genuinely thought embodied this emotion in my playlist and i tried to pick a song that wasn't you know just like a straightforward kind of love because that's not what love can be love can be so colorful and gray and sometimes it really challenges us and forces you to examine your own values and re-examine your own values so I thought that this song was very perfect in surmising all of that complexity and for you it's very much complexity your person's feelings for you when they last saw you were complex they weren't black and white they weren't simple and straightforward and you're kind of um easygoing love that they tell in fairy tales you know it was the kind of love that had history and that had some sort of tribute 
tribulation spirit tribulation it just feels like hold it down and give me some time is what is really sticking out for me your person definitely admires you and I want you to know that the primary feeling that they had for you was was love was adoration but there was also this feeling of goodness like you've done really well for yourself and we see that reflected in your other cards as well group one we see that over here with Midhaven, your person with Midhaven, Square and Six, your person was very impressed by how far you've come. You almost look like someone who's could anything, you could achieve anything. They saw you as someone who was still transiting though, you were still traveling with Midhaven Reverse and the airplane here. It's like you're still seeking your purpose. You may have found a big stepping stone as to who you are now. You may have cultivated a strong sense of identity, but they felt like you were still creating yourself in many ways. And it felt like you still were seeking who you were and trying to seek um, a level of identity. They may have felt for some of you that you may have been running from responsibilities in some way, that you may have been trying to get away from, because Midhaven sometimes makes me think of parents as well, um, and becoming a parent of some sort. So very rarely, it mostly makes me think of like purpose and career, but um, it just makes me think with that reversed and the airplane that your person's impression was that you were still creating something for yourself and that honestly the sky is the limit for you. It's like they were very impressed with what you've been doing and, and who you are. You feel like you've known your person a lot, a long time or a significant amount of time, shall we say, with Saturn Returns here. Saturn Returns is kind of hinting at this maybe challenging past that you could have had that felt very karmic with this person or they saw you go through some really difficult times. Saturn Return is often often when your hard work and all of the tribulations and the difficulties and the discipline and the commitment and the hard loyalty that you've had to push yourself through pays off and you almost get this like glow up and sometimes people only see the glow up people only see like oh gosh like look at you. <laughs> you, how did you go from this to that, like what, it's like night and day, but in your case with Island here, your person feels like you've been taking time by yourself to do this, your person sees that you've been isolating, or you've been spending time alone to do this, it feels like your per person felt very separated from you the last time they saw you, it's almost like they couldn't relate to you in many ways anymore not that it was your fault it's not a bad thing it just feels like um while they were very impressed they also felt quite separate um there was this feeling of like wanting to be like you like i'm hearing that song from jungle book i want to be like you <laughs> i want to walk like you talk like you too so that's what it feels like it's like Part of them, this admiration was a little bit of green envy, but it comes from this space of like, I'm very impressed and I have a lot of love for you and I'm very impressed with what you've been able to create for yourself, who you are, who you're becoming. And I also kind of want that for myself too. So I do think that you inspired your person the last time they saw you. I think they were very shocked at what you've been able to do because for many of you, you've either had a separation from this person or you haven't been able to show them everything that you've been working on and something got let out of the bag. They saw a glimpse of what you've been working on and they were like, wow, you're going to do big things, group one. You're really going to start hitting some heavy milestones. And it feels like your person kind of like, I'm not going to lie to you, I'm hearing the word betrayed. So it's not that they feel betrayed by you, but they may be feeling betrayed by your shared past. Um, for some of you, it's the way that they act acted certain level of regret there certain level of guilt but I feel like they've just overall when it comes to you I want to gravitate back to this feeling there's this genuine admiration and love and it feels like they're trying to measure up to you too with that hold it down and give me some time it's like I'm, I can get there too just give me some time over here with six and river your person gets a lot out of interacting with you so the last time they interacted with you they got very inspired they felt like they 
were inspired by your success and what you've created, your glow up, even it was if it was just a physical transformation, whether your skin is clearer, or your hair is longer, or your hair is shorter, or maybe it's a different color, or maybe your career's booming, or maybe you got a side hustle now, maybe you change jobs, jobs, maybe you quit jobs, maybe you're like, you know what, stuff this, I'm just gonna focus on my health. Maybe you haven't been able to focus on your health, but you've been focusing on your family, whatever it is. They really felt inspired by what you've done and by how you've overcome life's challenges and tribulations. And they feel with Six and River here that you've been able to balance your movement. You gave them this impression that you're very balanced and that you've been able to really look after yourself. And it feels like you're in a good place, especially financially, sweets. We've got Saturn and Six. That tells me that you're the kind of person that people come to to borrow money. So that's the impression that you gave them was like, you're very balanced and you're this kind of person that I'm sure other people look up to as well your person got that impression with river here there's this healing energy about you I'm I've been watching Vikings while I've been sick in isolation so this river is specifically giving me this energy of like someone just sitting in it and letting the waters, like those moving waters, cleanse their body, their wounds, their pain, whether it's on a physical level or a metaphysical level, you know, whether their spirit needs to be cleansed or whether their soul, their physical vessel does. It feels like you helped this person, you kind of cleanse them, you stripped them. Whether you had a strong conversation with them or not, there was this whole process afterwards where they may have had to leave and really think about the feelings that you were stirring because with River here and all this water moving, it's like they're realizing now that these feelings have been constant for you. These feelings have not been changed and they may never change. There's this constant push when it comes to you of feelings. I'm hearing rush for some of you, this river swells. At certain times, these feelings are very strong and hard to ignore. And at other times, you know, like in the dry season, when it's been a while, maybe y'all haven't spoken to each other for very long the feelings calm down a little bit but they're realizing that these feelings are constant like a strong mighty river and there's this strong feeling here as well of just healing with this sort of sixth house energy in this cup it just feels like you really helped this person process some heavy stuff um where i'm from when we have our wet season and our rivers swell, they clear out all the algae and all the all the sort of um, sediment that's been building and the, the rivers and lakes just look amazing. Like it's just beautiful. Everyone loves going swimming after a heavy rain, you know, as long as the water's still not white. It's beautiful and the fish are fat and it's just like, yes, you just want to kind of camp there and, and embrace that. So it just feels like you gave this person new life. <laughs> <laughs> I might sound like I'm exaggerating, but you really helped them heal. And I feel like they've been going through some stuff here that isn't directly related to you, but seeing you certainly helped them heal. So let's get some tarot out, shall we? And we'll delve a little bit further. I'm going to use this beautiful deck today, the Cosmic Slumber Tarot by Tilly Walden. I love the name Tilly. I think if I get another pet, I'm going to call them Tilly. Group one, please, spirit. What was this person thinking and feeling the last time they saw group one? What was, oh, yes, the hermit. Yes, we're going to put that down there. What was this person thinking and feeling the last time they saw group one, please, spirit? Hi, are we going to take you? We're going to take you. Oh, we're not going to take you. Oh. What was this person thinking and feeling the last time? Oh, you. What was this person thinking and feeling the last time they saw group one? Please, spirit. What was this person thinking and feeling? Okay, we've got the Hierophant card as well. Are you going to focus? Yes. We're getting Major Arcana out here. Okay. <laughs> what was this person thinking and feeling? Stop it. Sorry, i got to be careful of this microphone. I don't want to blow it. We've got two more major arcana. Who are you, group one? Who are you? 
announce yourselves. <laughs> I'm spending way too much time alone. I'm going crazy. We have the Tower and the Wheel of Fortune as well. So y'all got four major arcana. Did you hear me trying to say three? You got four major arcana. I'm going to put those down here. Do we have a bottom deck energy to help us surmise this reading? Wow, what a journey. Ooh, what a journey. What a journey. Back, yes. <laughs> I knew this was going to come out for you. When I was preparing for this reading, I kept getting a vision of this nine of pentacles. I was like, one of those groups is going to get the nine of pentacles and they're going to get that person that feels like the one that got away. Sweets, I don't know what journey you're on with this person. It's really not that kind of reading, but I'm picking up on the fact that your person not only has regrets over their own actions, but they feel very connected to your actions. And it's like they're either mirroring their version Version of success based on what you do or they're constantly comparing themselves to you not to purposefully gain inspiration and direction but to inadvertently check to see where they're at now I have someone in my life like this too where I never mean to keep up with them but no, no matter what I do no matter what they do we always seem to be doing the same thing sometimes years apart sometimes days apart so it feels like this is that kind of situation. With the Nine of Pentacles reversed, this person wants what you have. They're very impressed by your success. They feel like you're unattainable in many ways, though. You could be taken in terms of this person's intentions, maybe a lot more than what you currently have to offer them, but they see you as someone that takes care of themselves. You're very independent. You're looking after yourself. They do worry about your health a little bit. Could be a little side note. Um, only if you've talked to them about your health and something that you're concerned about. But for most of you, I feel like this person admires your health. They admire what you've done for yourself, especially your physical body. They feel very impressed with what you've been doing, especially if you've been working out or eating different, whatever it is. It feels like you might have had a brief conversation about this, or you might have mentioned that, yeah, I've been doing Pilates, or I now do yoga, or I really work on breath work and make mindful movements throughout the day, whatever the heck it is like even if you're just pumping weights like the rest of us in our life <laughs> whatever it is whatever it is they're very impressed <clears throat> and I can see here with the nine of pentacles reverse that there is a feeling of um, you not necessarily being in their lane anymore I don't know if this person ever really and I think that was part of the realization suites is that you were never really in their lane but you may have felt like a peer initially when y'all were introduced and now you just literally feel like you're just doing this for you you've got your own thing going you do what you can when you can as you can you don't seem to be waiting for that you know cookie cutter um, template that everybody else is working with so they're kind of like you've got this Aquarius thing going for you with this Saturn here I'm not gonna lie normally Saturn makes me think of Capricorn but it's making me think of Aquarius you're just doing your own thing like the star healing inspiring other people through the actions you take for yourself now let's delve into this tarot because when we have major arcana like this I cannot ignore the journey Okay, Major Arcana in Tarot is referencing the Fool's Journey, and the fact that all four of your cards are Major Arcana is telling me that this person is on a journey when it comes to you. <clears throat> Excuse me real quick, I gotta take a little sip of water. <laughs> I was doing my best to drink quietly. <laughs> that failed. I need more water because now I've laughed and my throat is dry. <laughs> I can't drink quietly. I don't know how people do it. My sister hates it when I make noises when I eat and drink and we live together. So I'm usually mindful, but <clears throat> it's just not in my nature. Okay. So goodness me, your person and you are definitely on a journey together. You're fated in many ways to interact in this lifetime. You were definitely meant to meet. Now, it's, it wasn't supposed to be one of those readings, but this is what they were thinking about when they last saw you. Whether they're spiritual or not, they were thinking about how fated a lot of your meetings seem to be. They were thinking about how much they learn from you, how much wisdom they gain, how much retrospection you give them. Like, this person may be somewhat of an introvert or they may 
may just spend a lot of time by themselves at the moment. This person couldn't help but admire similar qualities in you. They were looking at you as someone that's very wise, as someone who is really good at giving advice, who kind of just does their own thing, someone who seems to be going through a level up, who seems to be gaining wisdom and downloads of information, either in a very practical sense, like someone who's, you know, finished a degree or something, or you've just come across as someone who's had some real life experiences and you've really been processing that in your um, solitude. They see you as someone who's very good at helping other people with direction and they may inadvertently come your way for direction. Now, I feel like this person spent a lot of time after the last time they saw you just thinking about you and processing this as well. The Hierophant here tells me that you must have given them some sort of advice or you must have sort of helped them through <clears throat> a changing situation. It feels like wisdom and information is the main theme here with the Hermit and the Hierophant. That's the common link here. Aside from this period of needing to reflect in solitude and being introspective, this person was looking back, being retrospective and going, oh my gosh, I can understand now why this had to happen this way. You really gave this person a bigger picture, a bigger view of the picture, and it kind of felt like you helped them figure something out for themselves. They realized what they wanted and they realized what direction they wanted to take. They see you as someone that they're fated to meet. So you're going to either continue to cross paths in divine timing or you're someone who they have respectfully just let go of when it comes to, I don't control this at all. You know, it feels like with the Hierophant here, there was a lot of changing of expectations because they were humbled by the fact that this thing that y'all have is very much out of their grasp. They're still learning. And I feel like this person is still learning how to treat you, if that makes sense, because you're very different. Excuse me, I'm just scratching my neck. You're very different to others, other people, other relationships they've had, other interactions with people that they may have wanted to be in a relationship with. I'm not getting a heavy romantic vibe. I'm getting a, I respect you profoundly. I aspire to be you and I'm constantly happy and grateful to cross paths with you for the wisdom, information and guidance that you give me. That's the kind of love that it is. It's like this open-ended kind of love where there's no label. It just feels like it's fated at many times with this wheel of fortune. Your person felt like the timing this time around was perfect. They needed it. They needed you. They needed to see you. Even if it was just for a brief moment, they valued every minute that they spent with you and around you, and they really thrive off your energy. This is where you helped them find direction and purpose again with the Wheel of Fortune. You helped show them what they want, and you helped show them how much opportunity they have. This is where that inspiration takes place. For many of you, they could have traveled to see you, or you may have inspired them to travel after they saw you. It just feels like their direction kind of changed after you and they realized where they want to focus their energy. This person is somewhat of like a free agent when it comes to working with the universe. They just leave themselves open to fate and fate dictates where they go, where they spend their time, where they plant their seeds. And it feels like with the Wheel of Fortune that they got their next sort of download of this is my next quest, <laughs> if that makes sense. I may be making them out to be a Skyrim character, but I don't mean to be. Sometimes your next quest is as simple as, well, where am I going to spend my free money? You know, <laughs> I've got to pay my bills, I've got my savings fund, but what am I... What am I going to do in my spare time? What is my next interest or hobby going to be? What is my next vacation destination going to be? What is my next, you know, late night indulgence going to be? Whatever it was, however they are choosing, you know, it could be as drastic as they look to you to figure out their next career path, or it could be as simple as what book should I read before bed every night? They got that inspiration from you and you helped them harness that direction. Now, the tower over here, 
your person was thinking also about the fact that every time they see you, their life just changes. Now, if you have not known this person for very long, it has been a long time coming, the two of you coming together, because the tower tells me that the last time they saw you, they, again, are appreciative of the fact that this is how it's meant to be and it's going to continue like this for now. Um, I still am figuring out how to treat group one. Group one makes me feel all kinds of things and I have a lot of love for group one but I also have a lot of respect for group one and I also am a little bit lost and need direction from group one so it feels like you help them shed something that they were clinging to here with the tower whether this is a state of mind or a state of being or it could be an attachment to a person an object a behavior whatever it was here with the tower you showed them that it was pointless clinging to it because it was no longer something that was offering sustenance sustenance in their life and again could be as simple as you know y'all were talking about going plant-based and this person was like why do I still eat dairy I'm lactose intolerant you know <laughs> or it could have been as as hectic as I don't know why I'm still at home with my parents like I'm financially stable I should just get my own place I should just venture out into the world I don't know why I still cling to the relationship with my child even though they hurt me you know whatever it is here you helped them kind of realize this sounds terrible. I could delve into that deeper, that last um, analogy, but we won't. <laughs> it's not that kind of reading. Um, whatever it was here with the tower, it just feels like you really helped them shed that outer ego-based way of thinking that they'd been holding on to and it helped them see at the core who they are and I feel like this person is very inspired by you but they do think of themselves differently they do like to think of themselves as someone who can be this sort of free-spirited um, co-creator with the universe who just gets these little hints like this is your quest and they accept so you seem to have this profound effect on this person, group one, and I feel like the last time they saw you, a lot of reflection had to take place. They might have just been sort of sitting there living in the moment and it seemed like nothing, but energetically, a lot was going on. A lot was being processed. A lot of information was being downloaded and they were referencing a lot of things to their past with you <clears throat> and just thinking about how much growth you've had and how much growth they want for themselves. You made this person realize that they've been slipping a little bit. They need to amp it up if they want to be on your level. And they really realize that you at your core are somebody that they really love and that is not going to change. It's constant. They're very excited for you, but they also feel a little bit nervous about where you're going to next because it feels like y'all drift and I don't think this person is ready to let you go if you're planning on moving or drifting too far away. So let's get some channel messages from them real quick and then we'll get some advice. What does this person want to say to group one, please, spirit? Ha, sorry. Well, it could be a Capricorn. We have sex and we have happiness as my priority. I'm going to get two more cards. Yeah. What does this person want to say to group one? <clears throat> wow. Look at that. Exactly two cards. Wow. We have, I left because you told me to, and my life started when I met you. This is my eight and two of cups. That's my three of cups. A lot of emotion. Sweets. This person has very strong feelings for you. They see you as a solid friend. Okay. I've got to say it as it is. I'm getting friend vibes here. I'm getting, I will always love you, but I respect you too much to push things with our relationship right now. So your person is noticing how your relationship is evolving. This could very well have started as a situationship, you know, where y'all had these things going on and nobody addressed it. So now there's this elephant in the room and you've just accepted that you're friends. Whatever this is, strong friendship vibes. Does that mean that they don't have strong feelings for you? Heck no. We have the devil here saying sex. So <laughs> your person is still very attracted to you. In fact, what this is saying is that they were very impressed with what they saw when it comes to your physical vessel. You may have been open with this person about your struggles with maybe either your mental health, it could have been food, it could have been your body, whatever it was, 
they were so impressed with how vulnerable you were and your ability to kind of work with that. You weren't just trying to hide it and pretend like it wasn't there. You were someone who was displaying control in that situation, especially if alcohol was involved with the devil and the three of cups. They feel like whatever it was here, you were doing it because you had control. You weren't doing it because the alcohol was controlling you. You were doing it because you wanted to have fun and you seem to be someone who knows like how to balance themselves well this person's very impressed like you could do no wrong in their eyes but they do feel like um when it comes to you there is a little bit of like a difference there there's a little bit of a barrier a change is what i'm getting this person feels a lot of things for you that they feel are inappropriate to address right now so they are respectfully staying within this safe zone of the two and three of cups here being a good friend and and making sure that they're you know bringing positive energy into your connection that they make you laugh that they treat you well that they respect you that they connect with you they want to have more deep and meaningful chats with you and in fact, I think that they replay the last conversations that they had with you in their head, mostly because it helps them process where you're both at now. But with the Eight of Cups here, your person is realizing that it is time for them to kind of wander on and find out who they are and find out what path they really want to take and what direction should they be on. It's like you've been spearheading this and now it's time for them to catch up. Now it's time for them to really figure this out. I'm sensing that with this person, they feel very attached to you in a different way because I'm, I'm getting that for most of you, your person could act very detached. They could leave for a long period of time or they could just disappear. But the thing about this person is, what they say is different to how they feel. And I think you know this well about them. They give you little hints, they don't lie. They give you little hints. And then underneath is a whole well of emotion that is summarized with this five sentence, you know, five word sentence. I am getting here that your person with the devil and the eight of cups, they, have, they need to move forward. They need to walk away from you because you may not have told them, you may have shown them that like, I can take care of myself you take care of you. But it's so hard for them to do that now because they find you to be very attractive and they, they see you being like peak you. Even though they know that you've got more growth to do and that the world is your oyster, they see you being peak you. They want to enjoy you now. They feel like you're inspiring them to really be more dependent on themselves. You know, like, I don't know, maybe this is why they had to reflect for a long time because initially it was like, oh, geez, I just want to see them again. I just want to see them again. Why am I like this? Why, what has changed? Like, why is my energy so just attached to them now? And then they had to realize like, oh gosh, it's because, you know, I want what they have or I want to be them. I need to start working on me. I need to do this for me like they've done for them. Very interesting energy. The back of the deck here, we have, I just wish things were different. So... There's an impatience here, but there's also an acceptance of divine timing because you can't force pumpkins to grow. That's my Seven of Pentacles card. There was a level of acceptance here that said to this person, mm, if you really want things to work out the best way possible, you need to be like group one and do like group one for you. Not in the sense of I need to copy everything that group one does, but I need to carve my own path like group one has. I need to be brave and courageous and stick it out and get through the hard times like group one has. I need to get better at absorbing information and criticism like group one has. I want to be wise and give good advice like group one does. I want to travel and be curious and absorb different aspects of this world like group one does. Let's get some advice for you now, group one. What advice do you have for group one in this situation, spirit? Now, for some of you, your person is not as woke as I had been describing, okay? But they're learning. Part of them knows this, 
For some of you, they could completely have processed this and are constantly underestimated as to how spiritually aware they are. But I'm getting that for others of you. This person is not quite as conscious as what I'm describing. It's more of their subconscious that has been processing these things and helping their conscious mind cope with the feelings that have been arising because you really provoke strong feelings from this person, very strong feelings. Group one spirit, what is the advice for group one? What is the advice for group one, please, Spirit? I'll go back to my old shuffling. There we go. <laughs> we got Garnet coming out for you. Garnet used to be my favorite card once upon a time. Garnet over here is inspired by the fire energy. We also have the number 13, Sagittarius. This very interesting yoga pose, like, oh my days. Um, can you focus? Wow. As well as the third eye chakra. So as advice... Goodness me, Spirit is saying this situation is not predictable. Your relationship to this person is not predictable. It's not conventional. It's not meant to be. This person inspires growth, movement, and change because that is the nature of your relationship with them. You cannot necessarily expect stability in a connection like this. It would be unfair for you to assume that things are going to calm down because I can see with this number 13 and the energy of this card that you are both in a period of growth and so is your joint connection. When it comes to the future with the two of you, I see a lot of growth. I see a lot of exploring. I see a higher level of learning either through education or travel and religious experiences for some of you. It's very important that you continue to foster whatever your definition of spirituality is, whether you have a religious connection or whether you're more of like a free spirited person, um, whatever this is, you're on a path with this person that is bringing you closer to you, your higher self through your experiences with them. And I see that your advice is to try not to this force and fit this perfect triangle that you have with this person into a conventional square because you are very much in a changeable, mutable energy where things are adapting and growing and you should both be thirsty for life's experiences right now. I feel like you could not expect stability from a person like this and from a connection like this right now. The main energy I'm getting is movement, growth and exploration. And I'm seeing that happening on an individual level. You may come back together, share your experiences and then and who knows what will happen from there. But for right now, I'm seeing a lot of growth. I'm seeing expansion. I'm seeing higher learning, higher education, foreign experiences, really just getting to live this life. And that is the main message of advice that Spirit has for you, Group 1. I hope this was a helpful reading. That's what I have for you. It has been a pleasure to read for you today. I want to thank you for all your time and energy over here on this channel. If you enjoyed this reading, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content content. Before you go, I want to thank your spiritual team, my spiritual team, our angels, ancestors, and guides for helping me channel these messages and for keeping me safe while doing so. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and I shall see you in another video. Bye! Two and welcome. If you had the Citrine Quartz from the Picker Group portion, then this is going to be your reading. I'll pop your quartz over there. Excuse me, my microphone's doing weird things. Let me just fix that real quick. Okay, now today, Group Two, we're asking Spirit, what was your person thinking and feeling the last time that they saw you? As you can see, and you would have seen from the intro, Excuse me, I have pre-shuffled these oracle cards right here. We are going to get straight into your reading. Oh my days, I just got a hair in my eye. You are joking. Come on, hair. I'm constantly getting hair in my eye because of Kirkus, my cat. We're just going to plow through. We're just going to plow through. I'm so sorry for that interruption. <laughs> it's so dramatic. Um, what was your person thinking and feeling? We're going to get through these oracle cards. I've also got some tarot. We're going to get some channel messages and we'll get some advice as well. Now, word, uh, I've already told you this, but I'm a little bit sick, so I may need to just take some water here and there. We'll see how we go. What is your person? What were they thinking and feeling the last time they saw you? 
Oh, you're the Aries group. I did peek at some of the Oracle cards. So you guys, yeah, you're the Aries group. Interesting. We also have Capricorn. Oh my God, a lot of cardinal energy. Aries and Capricorn. What else do we have? Chiron. Oh my days. Wowzers. Aries, Capricorn, and Chiron. Let me lay these all out. We also have Desert. Okay. We also have Crystal. That's right. I remember your Oracle cards now. Excuse me. I just flipped that over. We also have Cauldron. Okay, which... Now, what else do we have? This was the song that will describe how they're thinking and feeling or how they were when they last saw you. Oh My Days, Cast Away by Yuna featuring Tyler, the Creator. Ooh, I just got chills down my spine. Ooh, I didn't know I got a call before. Honestly, you didn't see the best in me. It feels like you're mocking me. And now I've gone off so far away, a cast away. So, wow, this tells me a lot. Your person, your person had a lot to think about the last time they saw you. Um, pensive, I'm also hearing defensive. So I'm getting two things, okay? I'm getting two, two main messages. I feel like your person had this desire to, to, take action towards you with Aries and Capricorn here, the very cardinal energy, and they can be very authoritative energies, people who'd like to take charge and, and be in control and always like lead. These are very leadership sort of energies. But with Chiron here, there's a feeling of like the wounded warrior, someone who needs to actually be taking care of themselves. So your person was feeling like they should have done more. They could have done more. In hindsight, they, they're thinking a lot about it, okay? Your person is thinking a lot about the last time that they saw you. And you made them feel like, geez, I've done something wrong. Like, I'm almost getting eggshell vibe sweets. Someone was walking around on eggshells here. It feels like someone felt like they should have, would have, could have done more. And the other person was thinking like, why aren't you doing anything? Hmm, maybe that's their impression of you because I don't think that's fair. I don't think that's what a lot of you were thinking, but that's what they thought you were thinking. Your person is definitely a doer, okay? They're definitely someone that likes to lead. They like to take charge and I'm just getting this confusion. It feels like as much as they wanted to, they couldn't. As much as they wanted to, they couldn't. Look down here in this card. Look what's hiding down here, the wounded warrior. I hope you can see. There we go. Look at this wounded warrior just needing to like cradle themselves in the fetal position because they can't do all of this on a physical level. Goodness. I feel like the last time they saw you, this person definitely wanted to do and say more. They might have even had a plan. Not necessarily though. This might be someone you don't know very well, sweets. Or there might be someone that you haven't really grounded something with because that feels like that's what they wanted to do with Aries. It feels like they wanted to ground something here. They wanted to grow and work through something. They wanted to experience something with you. This is making me think of like an Aries that's craving experiences, that wants to be to prove people, um, to prove to people how powerful, courageous, strong, adventurous, all of that they are. And I feel like this person didn't get that chance to show you. There is regret, but there's also this feeling as though they'll have another chance to show you. This person feels like that's not going to be the last time that they're going to see you. But I do think that last time they saw you, there was something that they were supposed to do that they may not have done with desert here. Because desert is an environment that really pulls out those difficult qualities in us. You know, desert is where some people thrive and where other people are really just struggling to survive. So it felt like the situation was arid or very difficult and this person did their best and their best still wasn't enough. They never, they couldn't really overcome the challenge and be enough and do enough. It feels like you didn't get to see the best in them. It feels like you weren't able to see everything that they could be. And it feels like they weren't prepared. 
as weird as that sounds. This person wasn't prepared. They had to just kind of fill the role and hope that it was enough. Capricorn throws me a bit left field. The last time they saw you, they were feeling very drawn to you. Okay, look at this Capricorn card. Just have a little bit of a look at the way that the the movement on this card flows. When you look at images, I'm, I don't know, maybe not you, but me. I studied art for a little bit and it feels like every image I'm always drawn to, like the perspective and the movement. And this is straight down the line. Like this just pulls you, even though we've got these discs with the circular motion and all of this sort of elusive cloud cover in the background and the grass that seems to be so organic and it just kind of flows, you still get drawn straight down the middle and up to Saturn, which is Capricorn's ruler. So it feels like this person, they had this path, right? They had this plan. They had this sense of direction. They were thinking like, I know where to go from here. That's what they were thinking last time they saw you. I know where to go from here. I know what I want to do, but it's not going to be easy. In fact, for many of you, it could have required conformity, fitting into a mold and having to take a more um, structured approach to your relationship. Crystal tells me that this person has been trying to imagine something with you. And for that to be under Capricorn Suites, this person has been trying to imagine a future with you. What does that look like? Where, where, what would we be like? What would our relationship be like? How do we grow from here? I think with Crystal here, your person was thinking very much about the future. They were thinking about the kind of future that they want for themselves and with you. And I think that for some of you, this was a daunting feeling because on one hand, that's a a lot to fulfill that's a massive prophecy to fulfill and on the other hand they also felt like maybe you underestimated them sweets I keep seeing it feels like you're mocking me and now I've gone off so far away a cast away it feels like this person is still healing or recovering from the last time that they saw you. This person kind of felt like they were doomed from the beginning in many ways. I don't sense, again, like an ending. It feels like they have another opportunity, but it also feels like they had to kind of heal themselves, <laughs> maybe just kind of check in with themselves because this definitely wounded them in some way the last time they saw you. I don't know if I want to keep talking about this or if I just want to get tarot out to clarify. I'm so confused by this person's energy. It's like um, they're bruised, you know? Like it's not a massive wound. It's not something you'd go to hospital for straight off the cuff, but it's definitely something that needs to be addressed and monitored in case there's an underlying health issue. Like this person's just... Something was brewing under the surface here and they may have accidentally projected that onto you. They may have accidentally gone, oh, here's the pain from my father's abandonment. I'm going to project it onto you and bam, you're just like all of them. All men are the same. And instead it was just like, oh God, like mm, that wasn't group two's fault. Hmm, actually I was wounded before I met them. Hmm, this is a hard pill to swallow. Ow, this really hurts. Why can't I just unthink that? Why do I have to know that about myself now? So it's very interesting because Chiron, Chiron's very interesting if you wanted to like do your own research. And I've talked about this before. I'm not like a, um, an astrologist. I'm an enthusiast. I'm a curious person who loves the idea of astrology. And what I understand of Chiron is that it's the wounded warrior planet that in our charts can either be linked to past lives or it's just linked to areas of our lives or aspects of ourselves that may have pain or that may have prolonged pain or difficult pain that is hard to overcome. So it feels like in your case, this person was thinking about that when they last saw you, sweets. You kind of brought up all this uncomfortable stuff and it may, really made them feel like they had to step outside themselves and... Um, give themselves space to heal and think and at least really reflect on where that pain was coming from. Cauldron tells me this has been brewing for a long time though and you feel a bit mystical. This person's a bit scared of you, I'm not going to lie. They feel a connection to you on like an intuitive level, okay? And it's like you scare them in a way. You feel like a seer to them. You're a very mystical person, someone who knows too much, they, they think. Um, 
they feel very afraid of you in some ways or intimidated by you might be a, a better word. I want to get tarot out. Spirit, what was this person thinking and feeling the last time they saw group two? What was this person thinking and feeling the last time they saw group two, please, Spirit? We have the Hierophant coming out for you first. I'm going to get at least four cards. What was this person thinking and feeling the last time they saw group two, please, Spirit? We have the Eight of Cups in the reverse position. What were they thinking and feeling last time they saw group two, please, Spirit? You're joking. <laughs> we have the Wheel of Fortune. What were they thinking and feeling last time they saw group two, please, Spirit? The Princess of Pentacles in the reverse position. Oh my gosh. This person could be going through something, y'all. It's not your fault. They're just healing. They're figuring themselves out, trying to understand themselves better. The back of the deck, we have the Ten of Pentacles. Yeah, they were thinking about the future. They were thinking about everything they haven't been able to achieve thus far. They were thinking about, you know what? Why haven't I pursued my career more seriously? Why haven't I settled down and thought about starting a family? Why haven't I given my actual children more attention? Why didn't I end up, you know, proposing to my last partner? Why didn't I end up, you know, settling into that cozy little lifestyle that my parents want me to? Why didn't I do this? Why didn't I do that? And it was like, not out of like, especially if they were thinking about people from their past, it was not out of, oh, I really miss them. It was like, a, why are you group two? making me think about all the things that I regret that's their biggest question the last time they saw you you had them really thinking about their future you had them thinking about settling down being more structured being more traditional embodying that like 10th house Capricorn Saturn energy where it takes a lot of hard work you know these these aren't always um settling sometimes you have to work hard to settle um and for this person it felt like something that they had not really taken seriously or even seriously considered before. So that's what they were thinking <laughs> the last time they, they saw you. In terms of their feelings, you brought up a lot of issues about their past, okay? I don't think it was your fault. In fact, this could have been the first time that you really met this person <laughs> for a lot of you. This could have been the first time you met this person or you don't know them very well yet. But this person was immediately thinking, about their past and they were thinking about the fact that they were so grateful that they stepped away from people when they did but there's still a lot of healing that they need to do in the past and they felt like they left some emotional baggage back there that they need to tidy up your person was like oh my god I gotta bring out the good china and, and clean the cobwebs when they saw you that's what they were thinking they were like what I need to really consider um scrubbing up and being the person that I need to be and that involves emotion on, on an emotional level as well being emotionally available um, I feel like your person may have struggled to have conversations with you that were like this though because I'm noticing that I'm really struggling to talk about this card so they may not have been able to perfectly articulate their emotions or they may not have given you that explanation they may have just walked the other way and done what they needed to do and assumed that it was going to be easy and straightforward to come back um, but it feels like you had them thinking about the stuff that they haven't yet cleared up and resolved and worked on. And for some of you with this eight of cups reversed, it could be abandonment issues. It could be being more available in terms of their emotions and addressing their emotional issues. But I have a feeling with the eight of cups reversed that they were thinking about how things come back around with you because this person was anticipating getting to see you again so if this is someone from your past if this is someone who you know from you know even if it's just like distantly from your past they were definitely thinking about that the fact that you come back around the fact that you um, are someone that they need to catch because it feels like with these two cards together this person has to like get the right opportunities with you. You're not just someone who, what's the word, is going to be constant and stable. 
it feels like they need to be opportunistic and take advantage of opportunities with you, group two. That's what I'm picking up on. And I'm seeing a very specific person in mind, someone who has good intentions with the Hierophant, someone who means well, right? They need to maybe get the right information first, though. They need to get their ducks in a row. They need to probably ask advice from people that they love and trust. But this is someone who has good intentions. And the last time that they were around you, the last time they were with you, the last time they saw you, this person was thinking about that big C word, guess what the C word is. <laughs> if you're interested, please comment down below. I'm, I'm going to read your comments. Guess what the C word is. And then I'll tell you what it is. And if you guess right, I want you to add a little reply and say, I got it because I will do my best to do that as well. The C word is commitment. <laughs> I'm curious to see what you were thinking about. <laughs> But this person was thinking of this magical C word, commitment. And I think that this is a very big idea for this person. Like, it's a big deal. Um, I know I'm making jokes. I'm trying to keep it light. But, like, wow, this person was trying to get their shit together, group two. They were really trying to steer it in and rein it in and, and tick those boxes and be structured and be someone who can, you know, settle into this idea and this this pretty little you know white picket fence fairy tale outcome but they couldn't help but realize there's other things that they need to do this person feels like they're in a growing situation with the princess of pentacles reversed this person feels like they've got growing pains and there's things that they need to address in the material world they may be transitioning when it comes to employment or housing or with their financial situation they may be someone who is at that age in life you know where you feel like a lot of change is happening and it's really really developing your character and you've got to stay open and receptive or risk missing out. So there's, it's like this person is trying to embrace being a child for some of you, or just being like a young, youthful, opportunistic person while also balancing these very grown concepts of like marriage and tradition and settling and and being structured and taking action and fulfilling a certain role. This person overall, regardless of age, because I know that age is not going to resonate for all of you, this person felt pressured to fulfill a role within your relationship. And they took that role very seriously. But no matter how much they tried, the last time they saw you, they still felt like they weren't going to be able to do it. They still felt like they didn't quite measure up. They still felt like they had growing pains they have things to do and and things to learn and gain and experience before they are this ready person now I see your person may have been biting off more than they could chew the last time they saw you and it's not that they intended on letting you down because that was the exact opposite of everything that they wanted to do it's more that they realized like crap I'm still brewing I'm still bubbling like I'm not ready yet I've got more that I need to do. And this person's feelings for you are still developing, okay? They have this pull towards their past right now that involves, again, cleaning up those cobwebs, burying those skeletons in the closet. And it's all about becoming emotionally available and ready for what your relationship requires. This person feels like their feelings for you have great potential but you are someone that they need to just sort of catch on the fly. As if somebody's just sort of out here throwing balls and they've got to just be there to catch it. And like, yes, I caught pile two, thank God. It feels, it feels like this person is still growing. And their interpretation of their situation with you moving forward is that there will be another opportunity to show you who they are and to measure whether they're ready enough and to understand how emotionally available they can be. They're hoping and they, they know it's not even hope. It's like they know that they're going to have more chances to do that. They don't necessarily know when I've got to be honest with you. There's a lot of mystery around when, but they know that they will 
run into you again and that they will have that chance to really measure those things. Am I emotionally available? Am I ready for this commitment that I want with this person? And am I good enough? Because this person is working on how they see themselves and they are trying to level up their material world as well. So a lot going on there, um, a lot going on, a lot happening under the surface and a lot happening outside of the picture. If there's a picture painted of you and this person, this person has heaps of other pictures painted about the other aspects of their life, right, as well. It's not just about you. So there's a lot going on with the other aspects of their life as well. Is there anything else that group two needs to know about the last time that saw this person? Is there anything else group two needs to know about this person? Hello, the aid of torches, yeah, yeah. I feel like there's so much potential between the two of you and I feel like you never really got the opportunity to ground it. I feel like somebody may have just run the other way or it looked like they abandoned the situation and there's just all this sort of tension, could be sexual tension for some of y'all. Um, it could just be this chemistry and not really having that opportunity to ground it. It could also just be that there's a lot of unspoken words lingering in the air between you you know with this eight of torches i see that in your situation group two the last time they saw you they left feeling very frustrated and they left feeling as though there was a lot more that they could have done physically and there's a lot more that they should have said as well your person is a doer and right now they are doing their best to heal and to observe themselves from that removed place, like we do in meditation, where we don't take accountability for all our thoughts. We just observe them and then we choose which ones we want to cling to. That's what this person is doing. And they're trying to understand their emotions better, their emotional state better, and their wants and needs better as well. So that's what they were thinking when they last saw you. It was kind of like frustrated but at the same time realizing that their energy needed to be elsewhere right now and knowing that they will get that chance to be around you again. So let's get some channeled messages, shall we? What does this person want to say to group two, please, spirit? Oh my gosh, I'm not surprised. You are so beautiful. Why do you need me? Let me have you. Yeah, you... You, <laughs> listen, <sighs> I don't mean to be dramatic. I just need to collect myself. Um, you are a whole lot of something, okay? You are a catch. I don't want you to feel guilty for being everything that you are because you are exactly who you are. And anybody would be grateful to have you group two. Your person puts you on a pedestal. And I don't like to use that term anymore because I, I don't think that it's something that we need to normalize. People are people, but this person really admires you and they don't see you as being equals right now. However, they choose to measure and judge people's statuses, you are above them, group two. And I'm literally hearing that Tal Bachman song, she's so high, yeah. <laughs> My voice is so sore. <laughs> high above me <laughs> she's so lovely and that's what this person feels regardless of gender we also had the seven of wands this person is trying okay group two it may not look like they're doing a heck of a lot last time they saw you sweets they did their best and was it enough heck no you gave them a lot to think about and they get very upset about the way that things happened but at the same time this frustration is channeled through this knowledge of like I know I'm going to have another chance with the seven of wands your person isn't ready to give up they're ready to keep fighting they're ready to keep pushing through and to keep trying with the seven of wands here this person has the courage even though they feel like an underdog because Swedes if you if if they were in a lineup and you had to choose, they feel like you wouldn't choose them. So they're going to do their very best to feel good enough to exude that sort of queen of wands energy of like attracting what they really want by embodying that energy. And they're going to have this sort of courage and the strength to really push themselves to the point where they feel like you're going to accept them. They might be doing this because there is hurt between the two of you and you may feel like this person let you down with Chiron and the cauldron. You may feel like this person has a lot to prove, but I want you to know for all of you, group two, this person is willing to try. What else do they want to say to group two? 
Holy mollies. Wow. Look at this. Oh well, of course you're looking at it. I mean, this card, when it comes out, everyone's heart just drops. So we should be grateful it's in the reverse position. Three of swords and the eight of wands. I think we should see other people and I want you. You already had the eight of wands reversed. So we already know that this person left feeling frustrated, but they want you to know they didn't leave you to pursue other things. This person doesn't really know what they want when it comes to relationships. They weren't ready to have that difficult conversation with you of what are we, what should we do moving forward. So they had to step away and they had to discharge their energy and figure themselves out. Your person, when they come back, they need to come in with a clear idea of what you, what they can give you, because I'm seeing that they know in their heart that it's not fair to leave you in this gray area. They know in their heart that next time they come back, they either need to say, I can be the person you need or I think we need to see other people because you deserve better. It's either that or they step up and this person is really wanting to step up. So they really hope that they can be at your level. But I see that for many of you, this person right now is really healing because of something that's happened with other people in their life. They're really needing to focus their healing and their actions and their energy there right now. It's not that they don't want you. It's that they have other things going on in their life right now that they need to address. Back of the deck, we have the Six of Cups. This person is going to come back into your life. They anticipate the opportunity to come back around. And I see them trying to do that in some sort of like divine timing situation. Um, but it's going to maybe be with the help of somebody else as well with the Six of Cups. Somebody that they trust. Somebody that you may know. Um, someone like a mutual acquaintance or just the opportunity of like a mutual area, a mutual space. I feel like this person is definitely coming back around. Let's get some advice for you, group two, because wow, what a reading. Group two, please, spirit. Can we get some advice for these precious souls? What is the advice for group two in this situation, spirit? You have turquoise, turquoise, interesting. Turquoise in this deck is influenced by the throat chakra, the water element, the moon, and the number 32, as well as this interesting yoga pose down here. Reflection, spirit's asking for a lot of you to do deep breathing exercises, especially um, either, mm, mm, you don't have to, but for some of y'all, it would be helpful to do this at night maybe before bed or when it is getting dark, just to help calm yourself and remind yourself that even though we have electricity, nighttime is a time to sort of calm down and wind down. I have a feeling with turquoise here, there's a lot of uncertainty when it comes to this person. Either there's a lot of confusion, there's a lot of unanswered questions, there's a lot going on in your head, there's a lot going on in your heart. You need answers, you want answers, you deserve answers. But with this person, there's only so much you can actually expect from them right now because there's only so much that they're willing to give you. This person is showing me that they're emotionally unavailable because they are healing aspects of their life that are separate from your relationship. They need to work on themselves right now. And Spirit is really encouraging you, not necessarily to do the same, but to at the very least accept that that is as much as you're going to get from this person right now. I've just got to reset my camera because it's going to stop filming very soon. So you may resonate as someone who's been working on themselves for a long time and you know yourself well. I'm not going to tell you to do that <laughs> if you feel like you don't need to, but I do see that your advice at the very least is to accept that the information that you have for right now is all that you're going to be able to get for right now. This person cannot be here to answer your questions and to give you the closure that you may truly need and, and you may very well deserve. So it's very important that you use what you do have to find closure, to find peace, and to find the answers that you need in order to feel calmer and to feel more balanced. Because I feel like you need to heal an aspect of yourself from this person as well and just sort of separate yourself from this person a little bit. Don't take their actions personally. Don't take responsibility for the way that they're acting, you know? 
give yourself room to understand your own feelings because this person is seeking an intuitive connection to you as well. It's very important that you do separate yourself and that you don't get too attached to what they're doing because they're trying their best to do what they can. And I do firmly believe that for 99% of you, this person's intentions are to come back and to prove themselves. So until they do that, try to find closure and peace with the information that you do have. And those breathing exercises could be very helpful in those moments where you feel like you have overwhelming feelings or thoughts when it comes to this connection or just in general. Also, I see that confusion in this connection is something that you may need to make peace with, if that makes sense. I can't lie to you and say that this person's going to give you all the answers that you need or that you want. So for the moment, for right here, right now, your advice is to try to accept the situation for what it is and to try to find closure in how it is right now so that you can at least enjoy the moments that you have right now as well and separate yourself from this person for right now as well. So group two, that's what I'm seeing for you. That has been your how were they thinking and feeling last time they saw you reading. It has been a pleasure to read for you today. I hope you enjoyed this reading. I hope it was helpful and at the very least maybe confirmed what you already suspected and knew the last time you saw this person. If you enjoyed this reading, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for future content. I want to thank you for all of your support watching this video on my channel and to the community as well. Thank you so much for supporting Free Tarot. I know you don't just watch me, so thank you, thank you, thank you. And I also want to thank our spiritual teams, angels, ancestors, for helping me channel these messages and for keeping me safe while doing so. I shall connect with you in another video. Bye. Hi, group three, and welcome. So lovely to have you here. I have to calm myself down. I got too excited. I'm using a microphone that's very close to my face. So I got to be very careful about how excited I get, but you have no idea how wonderful it is to see you. If you chose this shell, then this is going to be your reading. Let me bring it close again, just so you know. Flip it over for you as well. I can't wait to go to the beach again. Oh, what a beautiful shell to choose, group three. We are gathered here today because you want to know what your person was thinking and feeling last time they saw you. And let's see what you got. We got some Oracle cards here that I'm going to share with y'all. We'll also get some tarot. We're going to get some channel messages and we're going to get some advice too, because this can be a very triggering topic. We're not just going to leave you high and dry like that. So spirit group three, please tune me into their energy. Oh, I love your energy so much. I was just being selfish. I don't need to tune into your energy. I just really wanted to feel it. Okay, spirit. What was their person thinking and feeling last time they saw them? We have the nine, literal nine, the numero nine. We also have the 12th house, sweet pea, you're that group. I remember looking at your Oracle cards when they came out. I was like, ooh, <laughs> We also have the void of course. Now the 12,000 void of course are in reverse. I do take reversals in this deck, but we'll see how we go. We also have shield. Are we gonna focus? Yes. What else do we have? We have magnet. Ooh, okay. Wowzers. And we also have lounge chair. <laughs> Not bad, lounging. Lounging has its time and place. Now, this is the song that describes their thoughts and feelings last time they saw you. Oh, that's right. You got this song. This song has been haunting some of our readings. I think in the last reading I did or the second last reading I did, this song came out for every group. So it's back with a vengeance for y'all. It's soon to be my favorite group, I think, because of your energy. We have just a girl by no doubt. So, wow, take this pink ribbon off my eyes. I'm exposed and it's no big surprise. Don't you think I know exactly where I stand? This world is forcing me to hold your hand. There's a typo here and it's going to haunt me for the rest of my life. But wow, we also have Maiden. Um, there's desire here. Ooh, there's desire, there's frustration, there's... Mm, I'm hearing begging. 
notice me. For some of y'all, this person, the two situations come to mind, okay? I've got to be honest, with the cards that I'm seeing, two situations come to mind. Either this is somebody that you had a very obvious ending with, or this is somebody who was like, don't let it end like this. They were seeing the end coming and they were just like, oh, I can't let it get to that. I can't let it get to that. I'm going to defend it, this at all costs and I can't let it get to that. It feels like there's denial in this connection and it feels like y'all aren't on the same page because this person assumes that this connection is either facing an ending or has faced an ending. Okay, group three. So that should help you understand if you're in the right group or not. It's up to you though. We'll keep going with your reading because who knows? It's a general reading. More stuff may come out. I have a feeling with this Nine of Pentacles and Shield that your person, much like the Nine of Wands, felt like they had to really push and defend and, and persevere through this. The Nine of Wands in some Oracle decks is seen as the Perseverance card, as the sort of rest and reconsider card, you know, like this is a better way of doing it. You're going to burn out. Is this really how you want it to go? And this person was like, yes, yes, yes. Let me, I just can't let it get to that point. I can't let it get to that point. So it feels like your person with you is between a rock and a hard place though, because there's a reason why it hasn't been going well, right? There's a reason why the end is nigh. There's a reason why we're looking at a void of course situation with a 12th house ending, because something that they've been doing has not been for the best of your connection. It has not been helpful for the two of you. And with this just a girl, no doubt, it's mad anarchy vibes, right? It's big rebel vibes here. Someone who doesn't want to conform, someone who doesn't want to fit into a stereotype and it feels like this person is like stuck between a rock and a hard place when it comes to you do I do I do this what they really want me to do as they expect me to be or do I keep doing what I want to do even though it's not working but what I want is this and I don't want to do this and I don't want to do that but I'm, I'm only going to do this and I don't really feel committed to doing this so this person is just a conundrum and I feel like they often don't act in the way that they intend to. And that may just be a reflection of their past with you, but it feels like whatever's going on here with this looming ending, it wasn't something that they actually predicted. It's not something that they actually wanted, even though their actions may have pushed your situation to that. It wasn't what they wanted. So the last time that they saw you, how were they feeling? They were feeling like there was a heavy falling feeling in their stomach. You know how you have those dreams or maybe if you've fallen in real life, you know, that, that looming sort of feeling of like, oh gosh, is it, am I going to hit the ground? Am I going to hit the ground? Am I going to hit the ground? No. Am I going to wake up? Am I going to wake up? Am I going to wake up? No. That's what it kind of felt like. And it could be better described as anxiety sweets, a very anxious feeling. They were also feeling very overwhelmed by the state of your connection. Like there was just, it's almost irreparable, but they're going to keep trying anyway. They felt daunted by the task at hand to try to bring the situation together. This person was looking at you as something that they can't afford to lose group three. And yet what they were doing was repelling you away with their lack of serious intentions and actions. I feel like your person isn't projecting this connection in the best way based on their actions. The last time they saw you, they couldn't help but think about the fact that their opportunities with you are numbered and they could count them on one hand. You know, the last time they saw you, they couldn't help but feel like they slept on this connection with lounge chair and void, of course. They felt like the situation was at a standstill with you. Not a lot of movement, not a lot of action. And they could either settle into a comfort zone with you and accept it for what it is, or they could try when, you know, that's like the rock and the hard place. They could try to do something that was very much out of their comfort zone, very different and may not be something they're used to doing in the sense of like, it's scary. <laughs> it's scary. Now, a lot was going through your person's mind, group three, and I feel like they couldn't help but feel a little bit angry. I've got to be honest. They felt a little bit angry. This person may have, um, 
blamed you for a lot of things especially with the 12th house reverse sometimes the 12th house can talk about well not necessarily the 12th house more so neptune but that can sometimes talk about addictions and we know that addictions come from heavy like addiction is um or substance use can be a symptom of other things right it's not just drugs are a problem people are hurting so they self-medicate and it feels like this person instead of dealing with what was going on for them they may have blamed you they may have pushed that onto you and pushed you away because of what they had to say and because of how they were acting and what they did and this could be as simple as instead of saying hello I have strong feelings for you and it's getting very overwhelming I don't know how to act and I don't really know what to say yet but I kind of want to see where this is going they may have given you the cold shoulder and pretended like you didn't exist and that was their way of coping you know whatever this was they pushed you away and it feels like it was very much the opposite of what they wanted but it's almost that safety net again that safety zone of how they operate group three now your person is very complex because with the shield and the nine here they were thinking straight off the bat, like you are a catch, you're worth defending and you're worth fighting for, but I just feel like it didn't go that way, okay? So I want you to know, like, it's not what you did. I feel like you and your person may have clashed, but I feel like they did that in a way to kind of protect themselves without realizing that what they were doing was the exact opposite of everything that they actually want. So I'm going to get some tarot out now because I am very intrigued to say the least and a little confused because I'm getting that they don't want things to end this way, but I am also getting that they don't really have a plan either. So I'm kind of just sitting here like, what are we doing? Group three's person. <laughs> what are we doing? Group three is like my favorite group in today's reading. What are we doing? All right. <clears throat> Let's get some tarot out. Group three, please, spirit. What was this person thinking and feeling for group three the last time they saw them? What was this person thinking and feeling for group three the last time they saw them, spirit? Yeah. They may have promised someone close to you to take care of you, and I don't think they did. I don't think they honored that promise. We have the ace of swords in the reverse position. It's like a parent or a sibling or a best friend. I promise you I'll look after them. I promise I'll take care of them. And they didn't. They do think about that, okay? They're not completely oblivious to how they let you down. We have the four of pentacles in the reverse. Are you going to focus? No. <laughs> There's that rebel vibe, that anarchist vibe. Thanks, Gwen Stefani. We're going to get at least two more cards. Group three. What is this? Oh, my gosh. Uh, that's a lot of cards that's a lot of cards do you want them all spirit I'm going to put this one back but I'm not going to ignore it we have the ace of cups reversed oh no we got to leave it out now okay now that I've shown it to you we got to leave it out we have the high priestess the morning in the reverse and the fool in the reverse as well <sighs> Yeah, they felt, sorry, I'm just laughing with my guides. They felt foolish, like a fool. Mm -hmm. I've had so much energy around me while I've been sick, just helping me heal. I don't mind it, but I've been like not doing anything exciting, you know, so <laughs> I have felt guilty <laughs> having all this like cool spiritual energy around me and I'm just scrolling on Instagram and watching Netflix. <laughs> So it's good to be able to actually channel it into a good reading for once. Um, we're going to, listen, we're going to unpack this, but I want to talk about your bottom deck energy first, because the bottom deck energy for me, if you're new here, or if you haven't heard me describe this to you before, the reason I read bottom deck energies is because they help me summarize or summarize um, the overall energy of your reading. And for you with the tower here, what happened last time they saw you was unexpected, it was sudden, it was jarring, and it changed things forever in your connection. This person had a revelation of some side, some sides, some sort, <laughs> some sides, okay? 
<laughs> getting my Macca's order ready. Um, they had a revelation of some sort and it, it felt like it really scared them. I'm going to be honest with you. It scared them. It destroyed something in a scary way. They weren't ready for it. Nobody's ready for this tower moment, but we can't pretend like this happens out of nowhere. And that's where that denial comes in. This person may have blamed you for this, right? Like that finger pointing, it's your fault. It's your fault. But no, no, towers happen to us, for us, because of us. The actions we were taking, the thoughts we were believing, the things we were saying and doing led to those moments. So this person may take a while to believe that. Their ego is thick. I'm seeing like, I don't, oof, I'm seeing like the thick, thick layer, a thick layer. Their ego is very thick. And it may be difficult for them to appreciate that group three, but they need to appreciate that. The last time they saw you, they weren't expecting these things to happen this way. I don't know if they were just sort of coasting, expecting things to go straight, hunky-dory, but for some reason it did not go that way. Now with the Ace of Swords reversed, this person had something that they should have, would have, could have said that they didn't, okay? They felt rejected by you in some way as well. This person may have felt that something that you said was very harsh. And they said something that they wish they could have taken back about you, or they did something. If this person didn't really talk to you, they did something that they regret doing because it felt very final. I'm seeing that like a nail in the coffin, just going straight in like bang. That's what it looks like to me. It feels like they did or said something that was very final and it was too harsh and they regret it. We also have the four of pentacles. So this person feels like they were too closed off. They feel like the situation you were both in last time was very difficult to get a good moment together where you could connect and emotionally feel safe enough to open up. This person has a lot more that they want to tell you or when it comes to their feelings, okay? <clears throat> so how were they feeling last time they saw you? They were feeling very defensive. They were feeling conflicted. Do I, do I open up? Do I not? Do I, why aren't they opening up? This person blames you a little bit for the lack of emotional intimacy in this connection because they feel that you pulled away and pushed them into this defensive mode. Now, for some of y'all, when I say they blame you, I don't mean to cast that stone, you know, I just mean to help you understand their way of thinking because it really feels like this person is trying to understand who is accountable and who isn't in this situation and who is accountable for what and who isn't in this situation, you know. So with this four of pentacles reversed, your person was really just feeling like pushed into that squishy, uncomfortable area of like, they want me to do something I'm not comfortable with. So do I do it? Do I not? What do I, what do I do? I've never done this before. I haven't done this in a long time. They felt very uncomfortable physically. They felt like they, you were expecting them to do something that they aren't comfortable with doing. And so they may have for most of you done nothing or done the exact opposite of what you wanted and needed them to do. Oh gosh, now listen, what's going on over here is a whole mess. It's a whole mess. It's a whole story. I haven't done stories on this channel in a while, so let me get this all together and explain it to you, okay? Oh my gosh, this person, last time they saw you, first of all, you terrified them. You came in like you knew you were meant to be there and you had every business and right being there. And they were just like, oh my gosh, what are they? they felt the otherworldly energy oozing from your proverbial pause. They felt like you meant business. You were there for serious business. You weren't gonna push them. You didn't have to say anything. Your energy terrified this person and it made them feel like they either had to match your energy and pretend to be exactly like you, this sure, ready, confident, knowing, mystical, magical, mysterious person, or they had to run. And for most of you, they were scared, they were anxious, and they may have run. Now, I feel like the last time they saw you, they were in anticipation expecting something from you, and it really cut them short when they realized you weren't going to do what they expected you to do, when you weren't going to say what they expected you to say. In fact, you just sat in your own little lane, did your own little thing, 
and may have even looked like you didn't even notice they were there. They were very, very secretly um, glued on you and very eager to see what you would do. But for most of you, you didn't do what they expected you to do. For most of you, you did the exact opposite of what this person expected you to do. With the morning reverse, this person, the last time they saw you, they felt everything had flipped and inverted. It was almost like a... Um, a weird moment of taking responsibility and accountability and it was like the less you did the more they realized they had to do and they felt like they weren't up to the task they weren't ready to seize the day they weren't ready to cop a diem so with the morning reverse this person was struggling with their masculine energy they were struggling to take action to be courageous to move things forward and to be the fire starter they sat at their dawn moment and watched the sun rise without them. And I feel like for most of you with this morning reverse, this is something they really regret and think about. They think about what they could have, would have, should have done here. The last time they saw you, they were thinking about the way that you make them feel. You bring a lot of warmth to this person. You do inspire them and you give them a lot of energy, but they misinterpret this energy as nerves and being too afraid and anxious. So you kind of overwhelm this person and it's very hard to take, get a gr grasp over that and to separate it, compartmentalize the fear from the joy and the pleasure, the anxiety from the joy and the pleasure. You bring this person so much joy and pleasure, but they just focus on the heaviness of it all and it becomes very overwhelming. So I can see that the last time they saw you, they felt very foolish by what they did and made for most of you by what they didn't do. This person felt like they were blindly following this path where you knew what you were doing. You knew what was going to happen. You knew that you were going to get out of it fine. You knew this, you knew that. They knew nothing. And they felt like they fell. They felt like they just fell flat on their ass and made a fool out of themselves this person feels now very foolish and very cautious about taking a next step forward with you they don't want things to end they don't want things to be headed in the course that it is but they aren't comfortable with being this person again and, and being an embarrassment and being seen as someone who is a fool so I do firmly believe that last time they saw you they couldn't help but think about what I'm seeing as either an ending, a new beginning, a bit of both, and just how the heck do we get there? You know, how do we get there in a happy way? How do we get to an ending in a happy way so that there's new opportunities? How do we get to a new beginning in a happy way so that there's a happy ending? You know, that's what they were thinking about because the main focus was this Ace of Cups, this feeling of I'm not getting what I want from this situation. I'm not getting what I need from this situation. This situation isn't making me happy. It's not emotionally fulfilling. It's not ticking my boxes. I'm not getting what I want. Why am I not getting what I want? That's what they were thinking and feeling. It's like, this isn't what I expected is the main message for you guys, group three. Let's get some channeled messages from this person now. Group three, please, Spirit. What does this person want to say to group three about the last time they saw them? You are so very special. You know how I was talking about that happy ending? This is it, the world card. The happy ending is the world card. It's like this feeling of culmination celebration a reason to be proud because you've worked hard to get to where you are it's a happy ending <laughs> it's like a graduation right or a 21st birthday look at all the hard work your parents did raising you look at who you are now this responsible young adult it just feels like this person wants that even if it's an ending it should be a happy ending because you are so very special and you do mean a lot to them already. Whether you've started something with this person or been starting something with them, whether this is a situationship, a new development or a potential ending, you are someone that stands out from the crowd for them. And they really do see that this situation requires like a special moment between the two of you. 
What else does this person want to say to group three, please, Spirit, about the last time they saw them? What else does this... <clears throat> I knew it. Hey, my days. We've got more than one. We're just going to go with this. I don't want to lose you. The four of pentacles. So yeah, that's the four of pentacles over there too, reversed. So wow, I don't want to lose you. This person felt like they were, you know what I'm hearing? That Abba song, which is from the play and movie, Mamma Mia. Slipping through my fingers all the time. I can't sing. It's terribly off key, but it's a beautiful song. Beautiful song. Um, and it feels like, yeah, you were. You're slipping through this person's fingers the last time they saw you. I don't want to lose you. I feel like I have to cling to you. I'm seeing like someone holding like a, a heavy weight with just their fingertips, right? That grip strength is real and they feel you slipping and it's like, <sighs> there's only so much longer they can hold on. I don't want to lose you. You're so very special. Group three, what else does this person want to say to group three? Hi. I hope you'll wait for me. The three of wands, that's one of the last things they were thinking when they saw you. This person, yeah, they didn't cope well under the pressure of the situation. Um, but they feel like they've invested enough energy with you to remain hopeful that your paths will cross again. You could be at a distance from each other now. You could be very separated. Or you could still be in communication, but just physically separated. You know, whatever it is, they feel like there's this like coming back around energy, like a, a cycle or an orbit. Um, that three of wands is almost like a, a wish. I hope you'll wait for me. It's not really a guarantee that they're still gonna hope. What else does this person want to say to group three, please, spirit? Oh, wow. They are healing right now. They're working on moving forward and being a better them. But moving forward and being a better them involves addressing... Why is it so dark? Excuse me. Did you hear me just breathe out too? Because I'm like, why is it so dark? Um, okay, it's, it's daytime again. Um, moving forward and being a better them involves addressing how they've let themselves down because with the Ten of Cups reversed, that's that's the opposite of a happy ending card. That's like a happy ending on its head. So they really do feel like what's happened in this situation is, is almost like a breakup, a, a sad ending. And they're trying to heal. They're trying to self-preserve. But they're also hoping for the best the next time they cross paths with you. If you have had a definite ending between this person and you don't want a bar of them, this person is just trying to wish you the best and prepare themselves for whatever the future holds. If you have not had a definite ending between each other, this person is still thinking about how things ended the last time they saw you. And they're still thinking about what they could have said and could have done and they're trying to find closure they're trying to heal and find peace they're trying to move forward in the best way that they can they're trying to channel that energy into positive actions because that's where they failed in the first place when it comes to your connection back of the deck we have i'm in so much pain and the reverse so they are definitely trying to figure out this pain right this could look like a deflection not wanting to take that accountability or denying themselves the chance to process things properly they may be drinking as a way of self-medicating because that message did come out with a bit of neptune's 12th house energy um, but overall they're just trying to figure out their pain and they're trying not to dwell on it this person's sick of being in pain if i'm honest with you um, can relate. I'm sick of being sick myself, but like, mm, they just don't like it and they don't feel comfortable with where things ended with the two of you. They want that happy ending. They want it to be amicable at the very, amicable at the very least. So let's get some advice for you, group three. What advice does group three need to hear when it comes to this situation with group, with this person? Spirit, I just need one card, please. What advice does this person need to hear? Just one card, please. Hi, welcome. We've been waiting. The Rose Quartz. 
Mars quotes in this deck is um, influenced by the air element. We have the root chakra, this wonderful yoga stretch. We have Uranus, the number 27. So, wow. Let me put this down and I'll put this down too. Oh my gosh. Group three. I love your energy. I still do. I know this has been a difficult reading, but I still love your energy because your advice is about reinvention. It's about what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And I don't mean to sort of get you into that energy of like, Bruh, you know, <laughs> leave this person behind. That's not at all what I'm saying. I'm saying that you have an opportunity here to create something for yourself and to ground yourself in opportunity. And I feel with this rose quartz that the way forward is with compassion and love and self-love. It has to be a please look after yourself moving forward energy. Treat yourself and surround yourself with the love that you deserve. And I feel that this Uranus and this root chakra energy, you have a new beginning on the precipice, which is in your life already for many of you. That is all about starting new trends, you know, really creating new behavioral patterns that you can thrive in, not just survive in, and surrounding yourselves with new places, new interests, new hobbies, new people, or the same people that have been working for you, the same interests and things that have been working, as well as some new stuff that can help you truly thrive. You're going through a process of reinvention and it does require you to take action and to move forward and to think big and to look big and to investigate and to be curious and to stay open-minded. When you think of Uranus, I want you to think of futuristic, open-minded, um, really just sort of developing ideas and looking at things as glass half full, anything is possible. Optimism, optimism, optimism. Your advice is to continue on the path that you're on and to not limit yourself with your way of thinking. Stay open-minded, group three. I don't know if I said group two back there. I apologize for that. But that is your main advice with Rose Quartz. And the best way that you can do that is by knowing yourself, loving yourself, and understanding how to show others how to love you through the actions that you give to yourself if we I was cut off because I talk too much <laughs> but we're back for part two <laughs> anyway as I was saying I was on a roll too as I was saying <laughs> spirit is saying we treat we teach others how to treat us based on how we treat ourselves how we love ourselves what we say to ourselves what we do for ourselves and someone like this who is very lost and doesn't really know how to treat you moving forward they need to be shown so show them who you are love yourself know yourself and really set those strong loving boundaries not necessarily expectations literal needs this is what i deserve this is what i need this is the bare minimum <laughs> if you can't do the bare minimum then why are you expecting to be the end you know the culmination if you can't do the bare minimum you can't expect to graduate with high what is the word in your like high honors i guess a lot of people say i don't even remember what we say in australia when all you're doing is you know getting c's and that's what this person was expecting. They were expecting to graduate the <laughs> university of group three with high honors while barely passing, barely giving the bare minimum. So that is your advice, group three. That is the reading that I have for you. I am not going to hold you. It has been an honor to read for you today. Your energy is infectious in the best of ways. I'm so excited for your future. Sending so much love and light your way. I want to thank you for all of your support in this video, on this channel, in this community. Thank you so much for supporting Free Tarot here on YouTube. Really appreciate your energy. I'm a little bit selfish. I love your energy too much, so I'm going to have to let you go. But before you go, I want to thank our spiritual teams, angels, ancestors, and guides for helping me channel these messages and for keeping me safe while doing so. And I shall connect with you in another video. Bye. Hi group four and welcome to your reading today. If you chose this beautiful rock, um, I don't know what I would have called it in the intro. I'm filming this before I've done your intro. So if you chose this beautiful beach stone, then this is going to be your reading. Welcome in. I'm going to put your stone over there. 
and I will introduce your topic again. We're going to be asking Spirit, what was this person thinking and feeling the last time that they saw you? Now I've got Oracle cards here that I've pre-shuffled to save us some time. We're also going to be getting tarot, we're going to be getting some channeled messages, and I'm also going to be pulling some advice cards for y'all as well, because these, these sorts of topics can be a little bit challenging to say the least. So I want to make sure you leave feeling certain about what you should need to do or what you can do at the very least, you know, information is power. So let's dissect your Oracle cards. Oh my days, this one's already flipped. How dare you? <laughs> Group four. Okay. <laughs> we have the two card here in the reverse position. Okay. Already flipped and ready to go. We have Aquarius. I'm loving Aquarius's vibes lately. I think because we're coming into their season soon. It's still Capricorn season for now. But uh, Aquarius ain't too bad. Aquarius is like slinging me in. We also have Taurus here. Okay, so a little bit of two action, a little bit of Aquarius, a little bit of Taurus. We also have house under construction. That's right, you guys got the most cards out of everybody. We have the world, who? Can we focus? Thank you. We also have jail cell. Mm -hmm. And we also have circus, interesting. I think my camera might die halfway through your reading, so I apologize in advance. We may be charging batteries around here. Okay, now let's have a look at the song. This is the song that sort of summarizes their thoughts and feelings for you the last time that they saw you. Wow, Closure, You Like by Nil, Lil Nas X. True say, I want and I need to let go. Use my time to be free. It's like it's always what you like. Why is it always what you like? Wow, you... <laughs> You triggered this person the last time that they saw you, group four. I was about to say two, group four. You really triggered them. I feel like you got them all riled up. Usually when I look at red, I associate it with your root chakra. When it's a lighter red, it's like you're still learning how to sort of stabilize your energy or a younger energy that's still learning how to be grounded and wise and responsible. Not so much wise, but responsible, let's say. <clears throat> But in this case, it was inspired by anger, this color. So it feels like the last time this person saw you, they saw how much of an individual you are. I've got to be honest, like the two reversed, Aquarius upright, Taurus, this person sees the two of you as being together, but they were looking at you as you're such an individual. You, you really just out here for yourself. And in some ways they saw that as being a bit selfish, not going to lie, but in other ways, how could they be mad at you and look at what you're creating? Like you've created something or you're starting to create something for yourself that you're keeping very precious and sacred to yourself. You're not wanting to share it with many people. And yet this person just felt like, how can you just do that? Like, how could you do that without me? How could you do that without thinking about me? How could you do that is what keeps coming into my head. So the last time they saw you, this person kept looking at you as an individual, as someone who's out here for themselves. They were thinking a lot about the fact that you're not on the same page. You're not really working together. You're not able to build something together. I feel with house under construction here that you had made plans or done something without them and they took that personally. It could have been something small. You could have been like, oh, I already made dinner plans. And this person was like, what? <laughs> Why would you just do that? Whereas for others of you, it could have been something big, like actually I want to travel and I've already booked the flights and I'm going in two weeks. And you were just like, uh, uh, you know, like this person was just like, what, wait, what? So I've got to be honest with you. This person was thinking about the future, but they were looking at it as their future and your future separate. This person was like looking at you and wondering, what they could make out of the situation from you. 
it feels like in this case, it's like two stubborn people butting heads. And you could take this as the energies reversed. Maybe you felt this way about them. Why don't you ever consider me when you think about your future? Why don't you ever come to me when you have these big plans and ideas? Why do you always do these things without consulting me? Like I thought we were together. Whatever it is, there's a clear separation here. And the last time they saw you, they were thinking about how you seem to be able to do these things by yourself, for yourself. I don't know if that's your intention, but that's what they were thinking. Now, this person was also very impressed with some ideas that you had about your future. It feels like they're really clinging to a conversation that you had here with Aquarius, and it had something to do with an achievement or something that you want to do for yourself in the future. And they felt very trapped by that, on the other hand, because it feels like you're making something for yourself, group four, and this person is not able to be a part of it, or they're not able to contribute in the way that they want to. They feel very limited in their actions, and they see you thriving because of it, so it's very difficult for them. It's like they want to be more invested and more involved, but how can they when you're doing so well by yourself anyway? They feel like, what could I add to that? Can I even add anything to that? This person is such an individual and they're doing so many amazing things for themselves. How can I contribute more to that? The circus makes me think that there's something that you're hiding from them under this tent. It's not so much the chaos that a circus often um, has. It's more that there's this big top tent that's gone over your life and they need to pay to be a part of it. You know, they've got to pay an admission fee to see what you're working on. They feel very far removed from your present situation. And on one hand, they feel very impressed, right? Because you're doing great things. But on the other hand, it's like, why can't I be a part of it? What, what's happened here? Why are you doing this without me? Why aren't we on the same page about these things? That's the main question mark is, why aren't we on the same page about these things is what your person is feeling. I'm so confused by their energy personally. I feel like they're so heated for no reason. I mean, check me if I'm wrong. You know, if, if you feel like they have every reason to be, then that's fine. But like, it also just feels like there's a lot of appreciation and love for you with Taurus here, but there's just this feeling of like, why can't we both do this? Why can't we both have that? Why do you have to be such an individual? <laughs> why is it always what you like? Why is it always what you like? So I feel like this person is trying to be free, but I'm also getting that this is a stubborn energy that they're projecting. <laughs> and uh, we'll get tarot but I don't think that they're going to do well. Um, <clears throat> I feel like it's just a stubborn energy that they project. Is there anything else with Taurus that I've missed, Spirit? Free thinker with Aquarius, yes. Taurus. Yeah, there's so much stubborn energy with Taurus and, and Aquarius, both fixed signs, butting heads, the bull and the free thinker. You can't outwit the Aquarius person as well, but the Taurus person is probably going to try through actions, stubborn actions, routines. This person may be upset with how little they get to see you as well. Um, could be a change in routine here with Taurus. Spirits highlighting like a hardworking um, energy that is, doesn't have a lot of time. Turning the other cheek, because <laughs> that's a butt. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I don't have a lot of time. Spirit, what is this person thinking and feeling the last time they saw group four? What was this person thinking and feeling the last time they saw group four? That song is just on repeat in my head, just over and over. It's such a good song. You wouldn't think it's Lil Nas X if you listen to it. Hi, we can't take you. You've got to come a little more prepared, like the Six of Torches, perfect. Six of Torches is showing up for you first in the reverse position. What was this person thinking and feeling last time they saw group four? Um, excuse ya, oh my days. What was this person thinking and feeling last time they saw group four? We have the Queen of Pentacles now. Are you gonna focus? Yes, you are, thank you. Two more cards. Ay, caramba. What was this person thinking and feeling last time we saw group four? Please, spirit. We have the 
king of torches and judgment in the reverse. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Look at these two. The king of torches is literally squaring off to the judgment card. <laughs> like how dare you disobey me, Coraline? <laughs> I've been watching a lot of social media. I need to chill. Let's get your bottom deck energy. If you're new here or you've never heard me describe this, a bottom deck energy for me helps summarize the energy of your reading. So with the king of swords at the back here, I can see that your person was feeling very observant to say the least. They may have taken swift action. They may have said something very matter of fact. They were talking and acting in a way where something had been on their mind for a while. Okay. They may have pretended like, oh, this is just what I'm thinking in the moment, but no, they've been stewing on this, debating this, deciding this for a long time. Okay. Whatever they did or say, whatever they did or said, said or did, it was, a. Uh, the outcome of something that they'd been deliberating for a long time. And this person thought that what they did was very just, very balanced, very fair, considering the circumstances. That's what they think. So I don't know if that aligns with you. I'm getting a slight distortion here because you're not on the same page, but with the six of torches, they were feeling very unsuccessful. Okay, there's something that this person endeavored to achieve with you that they simply couldn't. The last time they saw you, they felt like they had been defeated. There was something that they needed to do, wanted to do, they just couldn't. The other reason the Six of Torches is here and in the reverse position is because there's this feeling with you of like, I need to prove myself or I need to get that validation from your actions in order for me to feel good enough to be able to do what you need me to do. And they felt like there was a breakdown there. It just didn't come through. You didn't give them that validation they needed in order to support you. So there's a massive block now. It's like the hero's been rejected by the community and the community is rejected by the hero because the hero's bruised ego caused them to run. The human, the community feels like they're not safe anymore. So it's just this massive like breakdown in your dynamic. This person felt like your relationship started to fail the last time they saw you. And they feel like there was a breakdown in the way that you two saw each other as well. It's like there was a misunderstanding and how you, the two of you saw each other. This person may have tried to like have some private moments with you to really kind of connect with you and maybe be vulnerable, but I don't think it went the way that you intended it to, or they did at least. Um, with the Queen of Pentacles here, your person was very impressed by your material success or by what you'd managed to create for yourself, whether you're a parent or you have a child or whether it's a career or both or whatever this is, you created something. They're very proud of you. They're very, they feel very like you're very good at this. You're very capable. You're very able, um, very impressed. Now, the thing about this Queen of Pentacles is you seem to be someone that is very responsible and you seem to be someone that is able to do things. So your person got the impression from you that if there was something that you wanted from them, you would have made it clear to them at that time. You wouldn't have just waited for them to do it for you. You would have made it clear to them. You honestly, whatever you were wearing, this person was very impressed by your clothing as well. Um, they were thinking that you look really good and, and you appease their senses. So you smelt good, you look good, you sounded good. You gave the impression that you were doing really well for yourself the last time they saw you. With the King of Torches here, I feel like this person had been planning to meet with you for a while or there was things that they'd been planning to tell you. This tells me that they were strategizing something. With the King of Swords and the King of Torches, these two are planners, they're schemers. They theorize and strategize and plan and, and really try to create things into, in their realities, in their respective realities. The King of Torches is a bit more ambitious and more of like a risk taker than the King of Swords. And I feel that the King of Swords may have like made the situation a bit colder than it is through communication or action that was taken on behalf of your person. But this tells me that your person desired to really sort of bring fire and passion into your relationship the last time they saw you. They had intentions of raising the ambitious bar between the two of you. And my camera is going to cut out, so I'm going to go charge it and I'll be right back. 
Okay, group four, I am back to finish your reading. I apologize for that interruption. We may have another one because I just realized my microphone is low on battery, but we're just gonna power through it. If we get stopped again, we get stopped to Gwen. <laughs> we get stopped to Gwen. <laughs> We're just going to keep powering through. Now, group four, I was talking about this King of Torches with you last, this strategy, this plan. The last time they saw you, I feel like they had expectations is what I was trying to get to. I was trying to feel my way forward um, towards that word because I couldn't quite figure out <clears throat> what it was about this person. The thing about the two of you is that you look at this king and this queen, right? Similar energy, peers potentially allies very able to be on the same page except they're not look at how this king of this queen of pentacles is facing us and this king of torches is facing that way your person had some expectation of the way that this should have gone but they feel like you got what you wanted instead of them so they had to kind of like let that rift create your separation, your distant, your differences in a helpful way. Um, yeah, that's basically what I was getting to. I know that that sounds very different to what we were talking about before with the strategy and the thinking, but I really feel like they had expectations and it's like you got what you wanted and maybe they had to try find what they wanted. They had to make plans to do what they wanted. With judgment here though, which is where we were going next, Judgment over here is telling me that your person, oh, last time they saw you, they were thinking a lot about your history together, a lot about your past together, and they were thinking about the uncertainty of what the future holds. Judgment can be an interesting card in terms of the energy you read. It often talks about an awakening or learning something that is really harsh and hard to hear that you can't unhear. And it can also just be about a transformation. It can really pull you in and... and spit you out kind of energy um, and I feel like your person that's how they felt last time they saw you they felt like your situation really pulled them in and spat them out and I feel like they were thinking a lot about your history together and like where the heck is it going from here I feel like the future isn't yet written in your person's eyes but they do feel like your connection transformed and changed a lot because of the last time they saw you um Group four, I'm keep trying to be conscious of my microphone not going out, um, which is slightly distracting, I'll be honest with you, but your person feels like things with you have a lot of potential when it comes to the future. Sorry, group four, on my days, we keep getting cut off. You're not gonna believe my microphone actually died, so we're back again. Now, as I was saying, if this wasn't a romantic connection, your person, if this was, excuse me, a romantic connection, your person truly believes that you're the kind of person who they could have children with, who they could grow old with, who they could nurture a legacy with. Like they see that with you. If you're a friend to them, they imagine the two of you being able to like raise your children together, growing old together still, growing together, your person just feels like you're really out here for you, group four. And so they've had to make plans for themselves because the future with you is so uncertain. They've had to really focus on themselves and making these grand plans and schemes for themselves. So, goodness me. Very, very interesting energy. I'm going to see if I can pick up on anything else and then we're going to move forward to channeled messages and advice. Spirit, is there anything else Group 4 needs to know about their person's last thoughts and feelings for them? Feelings is what's missing. There's no emotion here. There's thought, there's energy, there's action, there's effort. There's even intention, but there's no emotion. I'm just hearing that song again. Why is it always what you like? Always what you like. Mm, I need to go. Use my time to be free. Your person and you, sweets, very stubborn. And I see them plowing forward almost to prove you wrong. <laughs> 
I'm sorry, but almost to prove you wrong. That's what they're doing. They're plowing forward almost to prove you wrong. Let's get some channeled messages from this person, shall we? Gosh, group four. Group four, please, spirit. What does this person want to say to group four? What does this person want to say to group four? What does this person want to say to group four? Oh my gosh. I want you to choose. I am manifesting you. I'm going to get all your cards out because this person is uh, confusing. The game they play is confusing. What does this person want to say to group four, please, spirit? Please tune me into their energy. What do they want to say to group four? Yeah, I'm seeing my brother now. <laughs> I feel awkward because he's going to edit these videos. But I see my brother and his friends now. I don't know if they have this word in other countries. Maybe. I think so. It's like a pissing contest. Do you guys know what that means? When you try to like outdo your friends by, by outdoing their achievements. It feels like they're having a pissing contest with you. I know that's a terrible way of saying it. Um, but that's what came to mind. I meant what I said. The Five of Swords reversed. Bottom deck energy is time to ground yourself. So they want to tell you that they're very impressed with what you're doing. You motivate this person to do for themselves and to achieve for themselves. And they're very grateful for the role slash influence you play in their life. Your person is confused. See, when it comes to you, there's something that they need to prove you wrong. I want you to choose reverse. It's like I'm going to show you what you need or what I want I know what I want is what they're saying as well. I was never, so for some of you, I'm confused, but they're not. It's like they're saying, I, I know what I want and I want it, and I want it and I want it. Hmm. They feel overlooked sometimes when they're around you. For some of you, this is a friendship more than a, a relationship. They feel overlooked. Because this is what provoked that horrible saying. It's like they're trying to outdo you, and not even impress you, like get your attention. I'm manifesting you. Look what I can do. Look how powerful I am. Look how pretty slash handsome slash beautiful slash obvious slash standoutish I am. Look what I can do. Look how strong I am. Look how powerful I am. This is like mad magician energy. And this is someone who's trying to get people's attention and hold it, trying to captivate an audience. I feel like this person, sure, they're probably manifesting you. I feel like there could be important communication coming from this person. The next time you speak to them in person, it will be a bit of a show. Um, they may have a bit of a mask up, but there is something that they really want to tell you. And I have a feeling that they're projecting this image of what they want you to see and how they want you to see them. Like the magician is all about smoke and mirrors. And although I feel like this person is very straightforward and grounded, like they're trying to tell you to be, I also feel like they have something to prove to you. And so they're going to project this image of what they think life with you or their life should be like with and without you because for some of you you're separated and they want to get your attention for others of you they're trying to provoke your attention enough to see that maybe you made the wrong decision it's very interesting it's a weird like head game is what it feels like a mind game is what it feels like now with the two of pentacles over here i need more balance i feel your person Honestly, they're saying that they're very busy right now. They're busy focusing on something very specific in their life. They always have time for you. Like as busy as they are with this two of pentacles, they always have time for you. So I feel especially if this is a friend, this is someone who's always going to make themselves available to you because we did have a clash of routines before come up in that Taurus energy. Taurus sometimes makes me think about your daily routine. And so 
I feel like whatever's going on here, this person wants you to know that they always have time for you. They've always, they always can make time for you. And then over here with the five of swords, it's like your person is saying, I, I didn't mean what I said. I said something that probably really offended you, right? I said something that could have really hurt your feelings. Um, I wish I could take back what I said. I wish I didn't walk away. I wish I gave ourselves more time to talk about this. I wish I didn't just ghost you for some of you. I wish I didn't leave you on the scene or read for some of you. This Five of Swords is saying that they have something they want to tell you. And for most of you, they purposefully held back. Um, time and place is what I'm hearing. Like, if they don't say it in person, it's probably one of those things that comes across really harsh or cruel even. So they want to wait until they see you in person to say it group four. I had to think for a second. I'm like, where are we at? <laughs> four. <laughs> okay. Um, goodness. You, yeah. There's so much more to unpack, but I've got to keep going. I'm so sorry. We're going to run out of time. I'm going to get an advice card for you. And we'll see what spirit has by way of helpful information for you. Group four, what is their advice in this situation, please, spirit? What is their advice in this situation? Group four. We have the red carnelian. Red carnelian in this deck is influenced by the solar plexus chakra. This interesting uh, yoga pose, a power pose. And we also have the number one, the sun, sun, <laughs> I was going to say the sun star, the, the sun, <laughs> and the fire element as well. I'm going to put that down and we're going to put this down. Okay. I apologize again, group four, for all the interruptions, but I sincerely think that for your group, because of how complex this energy is, I probably did need to be interrupted so I could go away and come back with a, a clearer mind, uh, be able to absorb the information better. Whew, I'm starting to run out of breath though. You know why? Look at your look at your advice. Red Carnelian, your advice is to take the opportunities you have and run. Run like there's no tomorrow. Run like there's nothing holding you back. Create like there's nothing holding you back. Believe like there's nothing holding you back. Believe like you don't have any doubt. Walk like you have no fear. Create like you have all the courage in the world because you are literally the key manifester in your reality right now. You have these opportunities that are either in your life or are going to be created soon that need your attention, your focus, and your optimism. You need to believe in yourself. And when it comes to this situation, spirit is really encouraging for you to stand up, to be courageous, and to take action where necessary. If this is something that you want with the solar plexus chakra, Take action when necessary. Spirit is encouraging you to shed light and to bring optimism into this connection. But in order for things to move forward for you in general, you're being called to be courageous, to not doubt yourself, and to take action, to move forward. You're someone who is creating wonderful things right now. And I see that this fire is, is very much about having an outlet as well as a purpose. So take direction, stay open to opportunities, and have that courage to step towards the things that you want as well, group four. It's as simple as that. That's your advice, sweets. And that is what I'm seeing for you. I think I'm going to call your reading there, group four. We were interrupted way too many times and I've had to change this microphone. So I apologize if the audio um, at the end of your reading was terrible. I did my best to fix the audio from the last couple of readings and make sure that it was easier to hear on all devices. I just want you to know, Group 4, it has been a pleasure to read for you today, even if you left me breathless, literally. <laughs> you had a lot of information come through, and I do feel like there's a lot of um, complexity in the relationship between you and this person, so I do hope that this reading at least confirmed what you may already know and may have offered more information about things that you were questioning. Um, I, before you go, I just want to thank you for all of your support. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for future content. And I also want to take a quick second to thank our spiritual teams, angels, ancestors, and guides for helping me channel these messages and for keeping me safe while doing so. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I shall connect with you in another video. Bye!